Hey guys, I wanted to give my opinion on uh, Diablo 4 as a seasoned Path of Exile veteran. And now that I've played it somewhere between 100 and 150 hours over the last week. Uh, as you know, I've been playing mostly hardcore. Uh, I did do the initial 100 race with Ben, Max, and Shroud. However, uh, I died on the first day to a bug, unfortunately. And then after that, I just didn't have any luck and uh, ended up not making it very far. I uh, ended up dying in the group play at about level 76, and then I also experienced the game solo from um, level 1 until yeah, just yesterday where I died at level 88. So I've experienced quite a lot of the game at this point, and uh, I, I do think I can give a very well-informed opinion on whether or not it's worth trying. Um, so during this review, I'm going to kind of start at the beginning of the game and talk about the pros and cons so we'll start with the campaign and then we'll move on to the eventually the end game and Lilith all right let's start off with the campaign I will say I am not actually a lore guy at all so if you expect me to re review the lore or the cinematics or anything that is not really something I look into at all uh, when I play these ARPGs I'm, I'm really focused on the stuff you do after the campaign because that's really what what keeps players playing for extremely long lengths of time However, I will say, as someone who didn't play the beta at all, and I went into the campaign completely blind, um, and I played hardcore, it was actually pretty fun. Um, the boss fights are really engaging and actually pretty forgiving to make mistakes when, so that you're when you're learning um, the fights, you are not just going to die randomly to a one-shot. I was playing in a group, though, so that made my experience probably a bit more fun and easier. But overall, the campaign was pretty solid, albeit... It did have some low points, like I believe in Act 4 there was an extremely long quest where you were escorting a guy around a desert, and it was just so much roleplay, and, and it was just pain. Um, but, that being said, the campaign is actually going to be something, if you don't like, you only have to do once anyway, because unlike Path of Exile, Diablo 4 does have a skip. So, after you finish the campaign the first time, you can just skip it on, on future characters if you don't like it. But, I will say, first playthrough, it was I had a good time. Now I want to talk about the highlight of the game, which was actually the combat. Um, I played Death Trap Rogue, which was Wadijo's build, and I also played a little bit of Sork, but I died fairly early. Um, but I do want to say on both of those classes, the abilities flowed together very nicely, and they all had meaning. I don't know if it's like the WoW player in me, but having like six abilities that all had a very important use at all times was very nice change of pace compared to poe where it's mainly just like you know one skill and then you try to automate everything else and then you have your movement skills um i felt like rogue w was actually like the most fun i've had in any arpg that i played in a very long time um and and, and fighting the monsters is actually relatively meaningful and there's some strategy involved but uh it, poe on the other hand I feel like I'm just killing mobs on screens and sometimes I'll run into a rare that's like resistant to my damage type and then it just takes way longer to kill. Um, D4 on the other hand does a way better job at, at dealing with that. They have one monster that is a bit out of the way but it provides a damage reduction aura to all the enemies but it's very obvious. So if you see that enemy you just dash to it or, or go on top of it and kill it and then everything else loses that damage aura and, and it's very squishy. So there's actually a lot more meaningful combat in this game, and I had a lot of fun. I will say the downside is some of the CC. Um, so the way that CC works in this game is if you have a form of unstoppable, you can get out of the CC whenever you want. But if that is down, then and some classes have very poor ways of dealing with CC, then you just have to sit there and, and tank the monsters while you're inside of it. So I hope they change something about the CC in the future. But I, I, I will say it's a huge positive to the game overall at how refreshing the combat felt compared to PoE. And right after I recorded this, they actually nerfed the dungeon density, which is a bit sad to see because I felt like it was a lot of dungeons were at a very perfect amount and um, there wasn't that much downtime in between packs. But now there's a lot of running and certain dungeons are just really not fun. Um, but... Uh, if they manage to balance out all the dungeons, the combat is still pretty fun. So hopefully with the seasons that come up and patches in the future, they improve in that uh, in that department. And uh, if that's the case, then you know the combat is still pretty fun in this game.
And unfortunately, we start to get to the end game aspects here and the review is going to get a bit more negative. Uh, I'm going to start off with my biggest problem with the game right now, which is actually just the UI elements. Um, so when we go over to our stash, we have four stash tabs max and there is no search function. There's no separate gem tab. There's no sorted tabs for like rares, legendaries, elixirs, whatever. You got to do all that yourself. And if you want to know what an item has on it, well, you can't search for it. So you literally just have to mouse over every single item individually one by one to know what item it is and would know what stats are on it and everything. It gets really tedious. Like, I understand that this needs to work for console too, but even on console, you can just have a search bar. I feel like it would even help them. Like, it's it's so annoying. Um, and then from there, we'll move on to the map or map overlay or the ma lack of a map overlay. Um, there are many times when I'm in a dungeon or I'm out in the world and I need to open my map to see where I'm supposed to go. And I'm just getting attacked by monsters around me like while I'm trying to do it. I'm also just opening my map like this every 10 seconds. Like that can't be fun to watch. It's better to just have a map overlay at least or something. I shouldn't have to go find a safe spot in the corner of my dungeon just so I can open my map and see where the hell I'm supposed to go. Like that just doesn't make any sense. I feel like it would just have a map overlay. Everything would be so much easier. And then the next part of the uh, UI that really annoyed me, at least on Rogue, was the combo points. So when you have combo points, they're at the bottom of your screen by your level bar. But a, a lot of Rogue builds, or at least the one I wanted to play, Penetrating Shot, had a dagger that randomly procced yourself to max combo points. But you don't want to be staring at the bottom of your screen while you're fighting monsters the whole time at this tiny combo point tracking UI that sometimes even overlaps with your buffs. Like... I want to be looking at my character in the middle, like, or something. Let me have like a, a health bar over my character with like a combo point tracker or something. It, it, it just feels very lazy and, and not like designed for somebody who's like actually trying to play the game at like a reasonable, reasonable pace. Uh, it's just very annoying. I feel like this is an aspect they could improve so much, especially for a game that a game developer that actually had map overlays before other ARPGs had map overlays like 25 years ago or something. Um, I really feel like they could improve the UI so much and it would be very easy for them. Uh, another small note about the UI that I remembered is actually the Paragon board respecking. Um, you literally have to go through and individually click every single pair node in the Paragon tree instead of just clicking like a refund all option or at least having an availability of that which feels so weird to me because the skill tree has a refund all option. So why don't we have that on the Paragon board as well? Like, I don't want to have to go through and click 300 times just so I can try out a different build. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, how do they how do they have that on the skill tree, but they forget it on the Paragon tree? It, it's just, it's just, it feels incomplete almost. Okay, so let's talk about the core endgame things to do in this game. Diablo 4 that you will be doing after you finish the campaign. So there are normal dungeons you can do, which are pretty rewarding. And a lot of people are just farming efficient layouts for, for normal dungeons for XP since they scale with your character level. Uh, and then there are nightmare dungeons, which are essentially just like Path of Exile maps. They have a positive affix and they have some negative affixes, which are actually pretty fun. And they scale up from 1 to 100, albeit they are not that rewarding, uh, more so than just regular dungeons. So a lot of people are just kind of farming regular dungeons anyway. Uh, and then other than that, there is an open world zone called Helltide where you will run around killing monsters and farm mats to craft your gear. And uh, other than that, there's not too much else to do. There's one endgame boss, Lilith, but... That's kind of the extent of the game. So after you get to the point where you're farming nightmare dungeons, you're really just chasing gear. Uh, there's not a lot of bossing to do. Uh, there's not a lot of like extra content to do. And I will give PoE a lot more credit because it's been in it's been around for what like five ten years now. So you know the game has been constantly having content added to it. But um, this the sad thing to me is. 
that I feel this game has less content in the end game than Last Epoch does, which is very weird to say when Last Epoch is still in beta and is made by a way smaller company than Blizzard. So, yeah, I just feel like I run, I I've already experienced a lot of what I want to experience in this game after 150 hours and there isn't much waiting for me until the seasons come out. So with Endgame being talked about, I'm going to explain to you what you pretty much do from level 70 onward and what you're pretty much grinding for, which is items. Um, so there are some unique items or classes. You kind of just have to hope they drop. But when it comes to rare items, the idea is you pick up an inventory of items and you want to look at them and find items that have high item power. And three out of the four mods are mods that you want for your build. And then you can come over to a vendor like so and re-roll the fourth mod over and over and over again until you get the one you want. So um, say this item had three mods I wanted on it and then I wanted to re-roll the lucky hit chance. I could just keep clicking this button over and over. It gives me options to pick from until it's what I want. And uh, then that's how you make your items. You can add on legendary aspects, which is this star at the bottom some of them are drop only some of them you acquire from just completing dungeons and that's it on pretty much every item you know it's not that complex it's uh very straightforward which is fine honestly for diablo 4 as this is the more entry-level arpg i think the system does its job it's not as in-depth in poe or as poe but it is uh it's still a solid system the only gripe I have is that a lot of classes, armor pieces, end up pretty similar, which is, you know, the same in PoE with life suppression. Um, you kind of want life and damage reduction on any item you can get it. You kind of want CDR on any item you can get it. You kind of want move speed on any item you can get it, etc. But I think that's just kind of a, the nature of ARPGs and strong mods on items existing. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the gearing and uh, itemization. And uh, yeah, I enjoy it. And the last thing I'm going to be talking about is the graphics and uh, character customization. Uh, I actually think this game looks fantastic. I'm on medium graphics, and I think this game looks pretty, pretty much as I would expect an ARPG in 2023 to look like. And I expect Path of Exile 2 to ju look just as good, if not better. Um, the, the mechanics from the boss fights are pretty well telegraphed. Uh, the skill animations look good, although not that flashy for some stuff. Um, it's great overall. And then when we talk about the uh, transmog, it reminds me a lot of World of Warcraft. Um, you can have separate slots for different sets of transmogs, and then you can come in here and select from you know a bunch of different hats, a bunch of different colors, and it's a really cool system, and it is way better than what we have in path of exile where you either need to spend money or your character looks goofy for the most part so uh definitely they get a they get some props for this transmog system i don't feel like i need to buy mtx at all uh in this game even though they are available in the shop um yeah it's just uh solid overall um so i don't think i covered absolutely everything when i'm talking about d4 here but i think i got the the basics down and um, the things that matter the most to me and hopefully that helps you make a decision. In conclusion, I will say that Diablo 4 is worth the buy if you're at all interested in playing it now or at any point in the future seasons when they add more stuff. I think this game has a ton of potential and at its core is very solid. I mean, the, the best aspect of the game to me is the combat and the combat being good is a really good sign. Um, so as long as Blizzard listens to the community and continues adding stuff in the next year or two, I think this game can rival Path of Exile 2 as D4 will be like the entry level ARPG to the, so like new players can get into the genre and then PoE 2 will be like the giga complex kind of thing and they will be able to succeed together. Um, so yeah, overall, uh, recommend the game and thank you for watching. Have a great day.